What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with our fourth grade mastery check for our area unit. Let's not waste any time. Let's uncover our questions today. If you have done one of these before with us, you know that we make these because of this quote right here. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. So maybe you're using this as a study tool. Maybe you're just checking your mastery and you want to see how much you've learned throughout our lessons. And this is a great way to do that. You're going to answer the questions. The way it's set up is we have the easiest question first and the most challenging question third. And if you miss one of them, it's a great opportunity to learn from your failure. Go back, rewatch the video or find something else to help you with that skill. We do have a paper copy of this and in the description for our video, you can find the Google Doc link there. You can print it out or just fill it out online. If you don't have access to either one of those things, you can just get a piece of paper, pause the video and solve it as you go. So our first question says, what is the total area of both rectangles? So my statement is going to say the total area is blank square units. And to find this, you could either do the area formula for both of these, or you could just count them. For this one, I'm just going to skip count because I know area is the square units that cover the surface of a shape. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 square units here. And then for this one, I am going to use my area formula. So area equals length times width. I know my length is six and my width is going to be six as well. Those are my two dimensions. So six times six is going to give me an area of 36 square units. So now I want to know the total area. I recognize that area is additive. I learned that in the lesson. So when I add these together, I'm going to get 14 regroup to your tens place and your answer is going to be 54 square units. If you did not get that one right, you can check out our irregular shape area lesson. We'd love to have you learn from your mistake. If you got that one right, let's move on. So our next question says, below is a floor plan for Larry's new snake cage. How many one inch squares would be needed to cover the floor of the snake cage? So my statement's going to say, you would need blank one inch squares to cover the floor of the snake cage. And when I go back and identify my important information, because I am following my sides check word problem strategy, I know that I'm looking for anything about the squares or the floor. So when it's asking me for how many one inch squares and then it's asking me if, to cover, I know this is an area question because when you do area, you're covering, first of all, and you're covering it with unit squares. So instead of saying unit squares, they said one inch squares because that's what my unit is. So to find this answer, I need to figure out, okay, how many one inch squares would I need to cover Larry's cage. I'm going to go back to my three steps for an irregular figure question. I'm going to first of all decompose it into two different rectangles. Okay. So here I have one and here I have one. And then I'm going to find the area of both of them. So here I can see that my length is 25 and my width is going to be 20. So length times width and that is going to be 500 square inches for this rectangle. Okay. And then here I have my dimension, I have 15 here and I have 12 here. So I didn't have to split anything apart. Hopefully you didn't use 40 because again, when you're doing irregular figures, you can't have overlapping figures. So if I use 40, that's an overlapping number. It's the actually combined length of both rectangles. Okay. And so if I'm doing area equals length times width, I'm going to have 15 times 12. So my area for my smaller rectangle is going to be 180 square inches. And again, I want to know how many I need to cover the entire figure. So I need to recognize area being additive and add up 500 square inches plus 180 square inches. And that's going to give me a total of 680 square inches. So it would take 681 inch squares to cover this figure. Let's take a look at our most challenging question. Oh, one of these questions. Joni has a rectangle. The area is 45 square feet. The length is nine feet. What is the perimeter of her garden? So this is kind of a combination of two different skills we worked on. We didn't really have a lesson about this exact question. We had a lesson about finding our missing dimension and we had a lesson relating area and perimeter together. Actually, we had two lessons on that. But for our most challenging question, you have to mix those two lessons together and apply in a new way. So first of all, 
I'm following my sides check strategy right here because this is instruct the beats and we love sides check. And my statement's gonna say the perimeter of the garden is blank, feet. Okay, because that's my unit. So when I go back, I'm looking for anything about the garden, anything about feet. So it says the area is 45 square feet. The length is nine feet and you want to know the perimeter. So when I develop my plan, when we were doing our missing dimension, okay, we needed to draw out our rectangle and label what we know. We know the length is nine. We know the area is 45 square feet, okay? And we know our area formula is length times width. I'm also though going to combine our chart that we've been using for our last couple lessons of finding the dimensions in the area, okay? And the good news about this is though, I don't need to find out all my factors of 45 and write them all out, which takes forever. All I need to do is use my area formula to help me find my missing dimension and then I can find the perimeter because I'm looking for the perimeter. That is my answer to my question. So I know the length was nine. So if I have my area formula, I have 45 is going to equal nine times something. I'm going to view this as a multiplication equation and use my fact family knowledge to rewrite this to help me find my missing number, my missing factor. So 45 divided by nine is going to be five, which means my missing factor is five, which means my width has to be five feet. I'm not done yet though, because I haven't found my perimeter. So now I can't add nine plus five because nine plus five would just be these two edges. And I know for perimeter, it's a total length of all the edges. So I have to know my rectangle is opposite sides are congruent and I have to add up all of my edges. And when I do that, nine plus five is 14. Then if I do 14 plus another 14, that's going to give me a perimeter of 28 feet. So if my area is 45, and one of my dimensions was nine feet. That makes my missing dimension five feet. And when you add up all of your edges, you're going to have a perimeter of 28 feet. Hopefully you did pretty well on this. If not, you can always go back and rewatch the videos, look at your notes. If you haven't, if you didn't take your notes, you can find notes for every video in the description of that video. So thank you so much for checking us out. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. We'd love to have you join our Instructor Beats family. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And again, we appreciate you. So thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.